Hi, I'm Paris, and I remember back in high school thinking that science teachers have a lot easier time of it than math teachers. Both subjects can be fairly complex, but with science you got cool, hands-on experiments you can do. And in that vein, there's a company called Mel Chemistry that has a monthly subscription boxes that you get sent out so you and your kids can do scientific experiments together. These male chemistry kits are a pretty unique idea. When you first order it, you get sent this big box with all the main supplies you'll need for doing experiments, and they send along two experiment boxes. And then each month after that, since you already have the main supply box, they send you two more experiments to do. They don't charge you extra for this large supply box, or you can look at it as they factor it in to the monthly cost. It's $50 a month for this subscription. They do not charge anything for shipping, and they ship to the United States. The United Kingdom and Russia. Thank you to the people at Mel Chemistry for sending me out this collection. They have 38 different experiments in all, so that would take you about a year and a half to cycle through them all. Find out more about Mel Chemistry at the link down below this video. Now, those of you who regularly watch the channel, you know I have two kids who are ages 12 and up, and it would be great if they were here in the video with me, but getting them to do the water wobble, the most recent video the three of us appeared in, the first time in, in months, I guess, took six weeks of cajoling, so this one I've decided to go on my own. Now, they do say these experiments don't involve explosives, but I'm sure they'll be pretty cool anyway. They have chemistry of monsters for this month, and tin, and I'm going to need, they're very clear on the back, telling you what's included in this particular kit, what you can make, how long it will take, and then which elements you'll need to take from your starter kit to make this work. There's also a Mel Chemistry app you can get on your cell phone, which will let you use the VR headset, and um, you can also take pictures of and record how your experiments go, and I guess upload them for other people to see. So this is a lot like the Google Cardboard headset with a rubber band. I guess when you download their app, there are also instructional videos that show you exactly how you should be doing this. I'm not sure where the rubber band comes in here, but okay, you can see virtual reality things. Lots of warnings on the front for kids 12 and up, and keep away from small pets as well. Oh, a periodic table of the elements. Every wall needs one of those. A tray for your spills, I'm guessing. All important safety glasses, two sets, very nice. So you can do this with your children and both wear eye protection. They include a lot of little cups in case you have a party while you're doing your experiments. You have up to 50 people over. Oh, a real beaker. Some kind of glass. There's a special name for this, I think, so it doesn't break easily, kind of like Pyrex. Uh, funnel, another beaker. Flask, it's a flask. Oh, this is the little lens piece you can clamp on over the camera lens of your cell phone and then use it to uh, magnify. Hmm, do any of them involve drawing blood? I don't think so. Oh, I think this is a stove. And some cork coasters for when you have that big party and invite the 50 people over. <laughs> don't let them get rings on your furniture. There we go. That's everything in the starter kit and the virtual reality headset. You only need a few of these items in any given experiment, I think, but it just looks cool to have them all out on the table. So I'm gonna keep them out and start with one of these. Okay, I gotta go with monsters. Here's what comes in the kit. Some basic instructions to get started, including put thermo stickers on all objects, which I think means pretty much watch out, this gets hot. Your, um, Two different experiments that you can do. As I understand it, there's enough material included to do each experiment more than once. Little tiny spoon, feel like Japanese candy kit. Hmm, aluminum and the chemicals, all labeled. Uh, I don't know. And the instructions on how to perform the experiment and things you might learn from it. Here are the experiment cards. It's nice that they give you an idea of how long it's going to take with the little dots up at the top, how difficult it will be, and how dangerous. The two that they sent me are maximum danger experiments, so that should give you a good feel for it. And here are the steps to take. 
To set a good example, I am now going to take the time to read through the entire instruction manual that came with the main kit and to read through everything involved with doing these chemistry experiments before getting started. Okay, I have read everything, even the periodic table of the elements. I'm ready to get started here. The instructions for this particular experiment also recommend having a bowl of water handy, so I do have that. They don't say anything about wearing a big yellow hazmat suit. My brother has one of those. An additional feature with the cell phone app is there are little codes on each bottle of a reagent and you can slide that, scan that with your phone and it will bring up a page of information about that particular chemical as well as tell you about the experiment so you can go more in depth that way. So here are some little sheets of aluminum and I'm going to be using this aluminum foil with the stove. I finally figured out how to assemble this and then I put it on the cork to help the heat from uh, putting a black circle on the desk. Here's the top of the stove. This goes in the bottom of the stove. It's this little ring that goes here into the center of this. I know, I could watch the video <laughs> and see someone else doing this, but that kind of takes the fun out of it for me. Pour an entire container of solid fuel into the little ring deal on the aluminum, okay. A white powder. It's kind of chunky. I'm going to shake this up to dislodge. I'm not supposed to touch this stuff. Oh, I have some on the desk already. Hopefully this doesn't ignite it. <laughs> Do not shake or subject to any vibration. It's not nitroglycerin. Press it down, aha, with the specially designed lid. Okay, this is cute. It has a little bump in it, so that'll make space for what goes next, with the next ingredient. Tap gently, lifting the mold. So this should lift up without the white powdery stuff. Okay, that mostly worked. Well, I was able to find a pure cane powdered sugar. Everything else we have is a stevia sugar mix. That's what we use for everything. I'm assuming this would work. Being more finely granulated, maybe it would speed up the reaction, but it doesn't say not to use it. Into the bottle of baking soda, which is the red one. Okay. Maybe this will all turn into a muffin or something. Now I shake this sugar baking soda mixture for 10 seconds and then I pour it into the little solid fuel deal and then I light it a fire. That seems to be an ample amount. It's overflowing the top of the little mound of the solid fuel. Time to bring fire. Step nine is fire up solid fuel. And then I think something cool is gonna happen. Here we go. Should be a black snake that's gonna climb out of that. Whoa, that's a big flame now. <laughs> it's like a, a marshmallow too close to the flame. That's got a little eruption stuff going on. There's no smell in the room. I don't know exactly what it is it's burning, but it's not producing smell <laughs> that I can detect. Okay, there we go. We got a tower of sugar growing into a snake out of the solid fuel. That is pretty cool. It does look like a monster climbing up and trying to get out of there. Reminds me of the um, thing at fireworks, the little um, snakes, little black pellets. You light them on fire and they sort of grow out in a similar fashion to this. Even this far into the reaction, I can still see it growing up out of the fire. I think the last of the sugar has been converted. Just waiting for the last of the solid fuel to be consumed now. Now, obviously the color changed to black and it really looks carbony like charcoal. When I went to touch it though, I found it just sort of disintegrated under my touch. So it's very fluffy and full of air. So what did I create? Well, I used their app to um, see exactly what was going on. I sort of figured because of all the carbon it had turned black and sure enough, that's right. 
By the way, I can throw it out with regular trash. They also say, under no circumstances should you taste it, even if it looks like caramel. So they talk about separating out the carbon atoms with the heat, what the baking soda does, that it actually adds fluffiness to your snake, that the um, byproducts of the combustion were carbon dioxide and water vapor. So that's why it wasn't a smelly burn. There wasn't anything in there giving off other chemicals. Yeah, like, like it says there. I kind of remember all this from high school chemistry class. And then they talk about the molecules themselves. This is where you can use the virtual reality viewer to look at the molecules floating in space and see them from different angles, see how the atoms are connected together. Next up, I am burning sugar. Now, one of the things they should have included for this was a time machine because they expect that I have sugar cubes here in the house. I had to go to the supermarket and they had one little section left that still had sugar cubes. I'm afraid these are almost extinct. This experiment is about burning sugar, as in sugar doesn't burn ordinarily with the flame, but there is a way you can make it so it will burn. Have all of my safety items in place. I'm going to need a little sheet of aluminum foil to put at the base of this. I can tell you the cleanup of the other one was very nice. Just lift the little sheet of foil out with the rest of the material on it, toss it in the trash. Here we go, one sugar cube. I'm going to put it into the furnace there and I'm going to see if it will burn. They assure me it will not. Nope, not even changing color. Maybe a little bit of yellowish color on it. That's it, sugar will not burn. It says to crumple up two pieces of paper and put them in there and burn them. Two sheets of paper. You can see there are extras so you can conduct this experiment again or if you, eat, you have two kids and they each want to try it. Two pieces of paper. I'm gonna make a little campfire here. Actually, what I'm going to do is create ash. Light the paper on fire. I can do that. Hopefully it's not enough to set off the smoke detector. Fire seems to be out, but it's going to take another minute or so for this to cool down. So I'll wait for that. Then I'm going to take the aluminum foil and actually collect the ash. My ash doesn't look quite like the ash in the picture, but I'm going to take this and now that it's cooled down, rub it onto a sugar cube, onto all sides of the sugar cube. I don't know if I need to have a lot of ash on each side. I assume it's going to act as some kind of a catalyst to get the burn started and then it will, um, the sugar will actually burn, I'm assuming. Otherwise it won't be such an exciting experiment. Here we go, let's see if this will burn now. Is it thinking about it? Something's kind of happening there. Am I gonna get caramel again? I won't complain. <sighs> I'm not seeing a burn happening. Seems to be working a little better with the ceiling fan off, but it's taken quite a while to get going. Oh, it's melting. <laughs> but it's still not burning on its own. So I went to the app and read about this particular experiment. And it's interesting what they're trying to show, how the ash can act as a catalyst, but you have to get it burning using the edges of the sugar cube, they said. So I'm gonna twist it around a little and try it again. Also key to note, perhaps it would need some time to ignite. Here we go again. Oh, I hear the sound of burning. Perhaps it would need some time to ignite. There we go. Oh, look, we got an energetic reaction going on. They explain about the experiment that sugar actually has a lot of energy in it. It's just hard to get it burning. Whoa, sizzling on its own. Oh, I like this. Oh, I love the smell too. Oh, it's making candy, but don't eat it. It seems like the sugar cube above is melting and feeding the fire below. I like it. My own little iron furnace going here. The explanation about the experiment was interesting and um, that, that you know there's all that energy in sugar because your body gets all that energy out of sugar and they talk about that and how um, once you get it going, it keeps going. And there's my favorite, love that caramel smell. 
Well, that was fun, and you can repeat that sugar one as often as you like. One box of sugar cubes has 126 in it if you want to try it again and again. I still have my other experiment kit called Tin, and it looks like you can actually create things like this, use their uh, magnifying lens on your cell phone, and take pictures that look like this. I actually want to try this. If you'd like to see another video of doing these science experiments, please let me know in the comments down below this video. And if you'd like to try these experiments for yourself, well, you can contact Mel Chemistry. There's a link to them right down below this video. Thanks again to the folks at Mel Chemistry for sending me this kit to try out. The kids would have had a lot of fun. They just can't somehow at this point in their lives realize this kind of stuff really is cool to do. Or else I'm less mature than them. But I think it's the first thing. You can keep checking back for future videos, including possibly trying out tin experiments. Or you can click that subscribe button down below. You'll get notified when our videos go up. See you on the next review. Epic review guys.